Welcome to the Sun Prairie United Methodist Church. Thank you for joining us online for worship on this fourth weekend in November. We are glad that you have joined us. My name is Lisa Wink, and I am the Director of Technology and Small Group Ministries here at the church. Whether you are a member or a friend of this faith community, or if you are visiting worship online with us today, we welcome you and are glad you have joined us. If this is your first time worshiping with Sun Prairie UMC, please know that we are a church that extends a wide welcome. Our deepest desire is to make God's love real for all people by the way we extend our welcome and care in the way we serve God in our community. We want to invite you to get ready for worship. Please know that wherever you are, your space becomes a sanctuary for worship. We want this to be a worshipful experience for you. So if you have a candle, we invite you to light it as a way to remind you that God's presence is with you. If you have your Bible with you or have a Bible app on your electronic device, we invite you to follow along with the scriptures. We are grateful to share worship with you and appreciate knowing that you've joined us. Please take a moment to register your attendance on the church website where you clicked into worship. If you're visiting with us online, we are glad that you've joined us and hope that you too will register your attendance to let us know that you were with us. And now, wherever we are, let us worship together in gratitude. Welcome to worship. My name is Jenny Arneson and I serve as the lead pastor here at the Sun Prairie United Methodist Church. And we begin worship today by pouring water into our baptismal font. And as the water is poured out, we are reminded of the Holy Spirit's presence at our baptism. And that being born through water and the Spirit, our baptism calls us to live as faithful disciples, as faithful followers of Jesus Christ. May we remember our baptism and be thankful. And now may we open ourselves to God's presence and with gratitude offer back to God our thanks and praise. It is good to worship today. To know you 
Good morning. Welcome to worship. I'm Jack Malone, and this is my wife, Sherry. Come, let us celebrate the goodness of God. God has blessed us with God's great love. Let us come to this time, letting go of our worries. Let us come to this time praising God. We come to worship to hear words of encouragement from Jesus who is the Alpha and Omega, the one who is, who was, and who is to come. We come to worship God through Jesus the Christ, who is King of kings and Lord of lords, forever and ever. Amen. Our first scripture reading is Psalms 100. If you have a Bible with you, please follow along. The words will also be on the screen. Shout triumphantly to the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with celebration. Come before God with shouts of joy. Know that the Lord is God. God made us. We belong to God. We are God's people, the sheep of God's own pasture. Enter God's gates with thanks. Enter God's courtyard with praise. Thank God. Bless God's name. Because the Lord is good, God's loyal love lasts forever. God's faithfulness lasts generation after generation. A word for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Hey, everyone. It's Miss Amanda. Do you notice anything different about me? Take a good look. These are my extra special listening ears. They are a reminder to me that I really have to stop and listen. You know, at my house, sometimes someone tells me something and I'm not really listening, so I don't remember what they said or I have to think very hard about what they said. And sometimes I have to tell my kids the same things over and over and over again before they really, really are listening. I tell them often, I feel like you hear me talking, but are you listening? Do you understand the words that I'm saying? And are you taking my words and actually doing what I want you to do? Today, Pastor Jenny is gonna share a parable that talks about the difference between sheep and goats. And in the parable, Jesus lists out a bunch of different things that we can do so that he will look favorably on us. But you know what? People tell me every day that I should be more like Jesus. I should be kind, do acts of service, show love, yada, 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 yada. But am I really listening? Am I really listening with my listening ears to what Jesus wants me to do? And am I actually doing it? Or is Jesus like my mom? Hey, Miss Amanda, I've already told you three times to be nice today. You know, I think we could all be better listeners, even if we don't have silly listening ears. 
Maybe that should be our goal this week, to listen to the things that Jesus tells us to do and to do them, to follow through. Will you pray with me about trying to keep this promise to each other? Let's pray. God, we know that you gave us Jesus to teach us, but sometimes we have a hard time listening to what Jesus says and following through on the things we hear Jesus saying. Help us be more like the sheep in the parable, kind, courageous, helping those in need, and help us to really listen to the fact that that's who you call us to be. In your name we pray, amen. We have the joy today of introducing and offering blessing to a couple people within our Sun Prairie United Methodist Church who have opened themselves to do the training to become Stephen ministers. And Stephen ministers are persons who have felt called to equip themselves to the ministry of listening, a distinctively Christian listening presence to others, others that might be going through troubled times. And we have had a strong history of Stephen ministry here at the Sun Prairie United Methodist Church for over 10 years, and we have 11 active Stephen ministers currently in our congregation. And I'd also want to say today that we have Stephen ministers who are willing and able and ready to be a listening presence to others. So if that would be something that would be helpful in your life, especially during these pandemic days, to have another person be a listening presence to you, you may contact the church office and we'll talk to you about how you can get connected with a Stephen minister. Stephen ministry training includes 50 hours of training to become a distinctively Christian listener. Brenda Wilcox and Julie Bogle from our church participated in the Stephen Ministry training with others from the Monona United Methodist Church and from St. Stephen's Lutheran Church in Monona. And we recorded the commissioning earlier in the week. So now I invite you to hear this blessing and hear the commissioning of our Stephen ministers. It is good that uh, through this recording, uh, the congregations of St. Stephen's Lutheran Church Monona, Monona United Methodist, and Sun Prairie United Methodists can share in uh, the commissioning of uh, five new Stephen ministers from these three congregations. Uh, we're pleased that that can happen. Stephen, Brenda, Stephen, Julie, Winston, you've been called to the caring work of Stephen ministry. Together you have studied, listened, discussed, shared in practicing the skills that you developed, shared scripture and prayer. We've come now to commission you as Stephen ministers to provide care in your respective faith communities. We ask you each to introduce yourself at this time. Hello, I'm Winston Hopkins. And I've been a member of United Methodist Church for over 30 years. God has called me to serve my congregation as a Stephen minister. I'm really looking forward to this challenge with God's help. Amen. Hi, I'm Brenda Wilcox from Sun Prairie United Methodist Church. I have been blessed with family and friends that have seen me through some tough situations. Um, tough life situations, and I would like to pass that on to others um, that love and caring and feel called to do that. I'm Julie Bogle. I'm at the Sun Prairie United Methodist Church. I engaged in Stephen Ministry training um, to gain skills to be able to help other people, and along the way, I have learned so much from the people around me. I'm grateful for the opportunity. Hello, my name is Steve Jacobs. I'm a member of St. Stephen's Lutheran Congregation in Monona. Being a Stephen minister to me is about being present for someone in need. It's about providing support through prayer and the Holy Spirit. Stephen ministers work the process of caring, but God provides the results. My name is Stephen Revin. I am a member of St. Stephen's Lutheran Congregation. I am looking forward to the opportunity to be the branch attached to the vine of Christ and to help bear fruit uh, in my neighbor, whomever my neighbor is. It could be anyone. So I'm, I'm honored to have the opportunity and to have gotten the opportunity to work 
with the Stephen Ministry training staff and my fellow classmates. You have been equipped to serve as Stephen ministers in your own communities of faith. We intend to commission you now to serve and care for those who need comfort. You have been given gifts for service. Use your gifts and talents to help bring wholeness to those who need your caring. Be instruments through which the loving spirit of Christ can bring healing and help. Are you prepared to meet the requests for caring ministry that we ask of you? Yes, yes. yes. with, with God's help. help. God. Are you prepared to nurture the skills you have learned and use them in service to others to support, encourage, build up, and comfort people in their times of need? Yes, yes, yes. with the help of God. God. Are you prepared to serve as Stephen ministers in your respective congregations? Yes. Yeah. yeah. With, With the help, help of God. God. You who are members of the congregation, open your hearts to the ministry of these people and pray for them that they may be effective servants of Christ. When you have need of help, allow these persons to work with you as you face struggles in your life, that you may receive support and help from your Christian sisters and brothers. Brenda, may you share Christ's ever abundant love with others so that they and you may grow in his wholeness. May the Lord Jesus, who has graciously called you his disciple, now strengthen you by his Holy Spirit for your ministry in and to this world. Amen. Julie, may you share Christ's ever abundant love with others so that they and you may grow in his wholeness. May the Lord Jesus, who has graciously called you his disciple, now strengthen you by his Holy Spirit for your ministry in and to this world. Amen. Winston, may you share Christ's ever abundant love with others so that they and you may grow in his wholeness. May the Lord Jesus, who has graciously called you his disciple, now strengthen you by his spirit for your ministry in and to this world. Amen. Steve, may you share Christ's ever abundant love with others so that you, that they and you may grow in his wholeness. May the Lord Jesus, who has graciously called you his disciple, now strengthen you by his spirit for your ministry in and to this world. Amen. Amen. Stefan, may you share Christ's ever abundant love with others so that they and you may grow in his wholeness. May the Lord Jesus, who has graciously called you his disciple, now strengthen you by his spirit for your ministry in and to this world. Amen. Let us pray. We ask you, O oh God, to take our sisters, Julie and Brenda, and our brothers, Winston, Steve, and Stefan. You have blessed them with particular gifts and talents and have provided them with an opportunity to learn more about helping people. May they serve you with the power of the Holy Spirit. May they be quick to serve, patient in listening, and willing to share themselves with others. Give us thankful hearts for them. In times of stress and of satisfaction, show them a special measure of your mercy and joy. Keep them strong in the faith you have given them for the sake of Jesus, who asks for all of us in every way forever. Amen. Amen. Receive the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. 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 Now, as we come to our time of confession, we bring ourselves humbly into God's presence, knowing that there is nothing that can separate us from God and nothing is beyond God's love. So with humble hearts, let us share together in our prayer of confession. Let us pray. 
Most loving God, we can hardly comprehend the scope of your forgiveness or believe your amazing love for us. We confess that often we close ourselves off from your saving presence and withhold forgiveness from other people. Through the power of your Holy Spirit, grant us the assurance of your love and, forg and forgive us. May we be transformed in heart and mind as we reach out beyond ourselves and give back from the blessings of our lives. Together, may our hearts be filled with gratitude for your grace as we make our silent confessions. Hear the good news. Jesus Christ sees into the deepest corners of our hearts and knows our deepest needs and hears our humble confessions. And all of that is given to us as a promise in the gospel. Holding to that promise, I proclaim to you that we are a forgiven people. Thanks be to God. Amen. Sometimes it's moments of brokenness which create the greatest transformations. Times where fear gives birth to faith, pain leads to healing, and chaos dissolves into peace. It's in these times we often see God more clearly. For in our deepest turmoil, He remains faithful. When our spirit is crushed, he remains strong. When our moment is too heavy, He carries the burden. As gold is refined by fire, we too are often refined by struggle. It's part of growing, changing, becoming. Lately, the journey has been difficult. Our breath has been labored. Our steps uneasy, but we stand in faith, knowing who is leading us through this desert, the God of peace, the God of hope, the God of restoration. On the calendar of the church year, today is Reign of Christ, or Christ the King weekend, and it is the last weekend of the church year. Next weekend, we start a new church year with the start of the Advent season, the season in which we prepare for the coming of Jesus into the world at Christmas as the Christ child. Today's story appears only in the Gospel of Matthew, and it is a scene of last judgment as Jesus gives his followers one more story, one more story about what it means to be a follower of Jesus. The setting of this Gospel story is in Jerusalem, during the last week of Jesus' earthly life. And I'll be reading from the 25th chapter of the Gospel of Matthew, verses 31 to 46. And if you have a Bible with you or a Bible app on your electronic device, I invite you to follow along. And the words will also be on the screen. So now with open hearts, listen now to a word of God. Now when the human one comes in his majesty and all his angels are with him, he will sit on his majestic throne, all the nations will be gathered in front of him. He will separate them from each other just as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will put the sheep on his right side, but the goats he will put on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who will receive good things from God, inherit the kingdom that was prepared for you before the world began. I was hungry and you gave me food to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me a drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothes to wear. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then those who are righteous will reply to him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you a drink? When did we see you as a stranger and welcome you, or naked and give you clothes to wear? When did we see you sick or in prison and visit you? Then the king will reply to them, I assure you, 
that when you have done for one of the least of these, my brothers and sisters, you have done it for me. Then he will say to those on his left, get away from me, you who will receive terrible things. Go into the unending fire that has been prepared for the devil and his angels. I was hungry, and you didn't give me food to eat. I was thirsty, and you didn't give me anything to drink. I was a stranger, and you didn't welcome me. I was naked, and you didn't give me clothes to wear. I was sick and in prison, and you didn't visit me. Then they will reply, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and didn't do anything to help you? Then he will answer, I assure you that when you haven't done it for one of the least of these, you haven't done it for me. And they will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous ones will go into eternal life. A word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Gracious God, as we open our hearts and minds to receive these words of Scripture and hear the proclaiming of your love, may we receive the blessings and the strength that you will give to each one of us as we take your hope, your compassion, and your love out into a waiting and needy world, knowing that you go with us as our strength, our rock, and our redeemer. Amen. We could say that this story in the 25th chapter of the Gospel of Matthew is Jesus' last lecture, or his last will and testament to his family. And it's one of those scriptures in which Jesus does some truth-telling. And we don't know whether we're really ready to hear what Jesus has to say. We have heard the charge before, we've heard the challenge before, to feed the hungry, give drink to the thirsty, welcome the stranger, clothe the naked, care for the sick, and reach out to those who are imprisoned. Yet this gospel passage allows us to ask ourselves, who is our God? Who is our neighbor? And are we living as followers of Jesus? This passage, or from this passage, it seems that the final judgment is really based on how we treat people. It's based on how we have treated others. How we treat the least of these, Jesus says in the scripture. And Jesus really didn't mince words here. Reach out to those in need, he says, and you will see the face of Christ. Reach out to those in need and you will see the face of God. The Reverend Jim Wallace is founder and editor of Sojourners Magazine in Washington, D.C. He's also an advocate on issues of poverty and also on issues of peace and social justice. He tells a story about one Saturday when the food line outside the Sojourner Neighborhood Center, just a mile and a half from the White House, stretched to include over 300 families who were hoping to get a bag of groceries that would be critical to helping them make it through the week. And just before the doors opened, all those that had helped bag up the food and prepare the food joined hands to say a prayer. The prayer was offered by an older woman who knew what it was like to be poor. First, she thanked God for another day, saying, we are blessed for another day to serve you, God. Then Jim Wallace says, I'll never forget the next words she prayed. She said, God, we will know that you are coming through this line today. So, Lord, help us to treat you well. This is a good summary of the 25th chapter of the Gospel of Matthew, where when Jesus says, just as you have done it to the least of these, brothers and sisters of mine, you have done it to me. When we open our eyes to life around us, we might just see the face of God. And we might just have a chance to see Jesus as if we were seeing Jesus for the first time. We probably all have our favorite stories or scripture passages in the Bible. We probably all have our least favorite stories or scriptures in the Bible. This story from the Gospel of Matthew is one of my least favorites. Not because of what it says, but because of how it gets portrayed. The difficulty for me is what people say about God, 
especially after hearing about the separating of the sheep and the goats in this story. So often this scripture is used to support an image of God as if God is some stone-hearted judge sitting on a throne determining guilt or innocence. And if we are guilty, and who isn't, the judge will sentence us to eternal punishment. The message I have heard so often preached on these verses is, in essence, if you are not good enough, if you are not obedient enough, if you don't feed the hungry and you don't clothe the naked and you don't welcome the stranger or visit the sick or the imprisoned, then you are going straight into eternal punishment, which some people call hell, and there's no way out. End of story. And so often the opposite message also gets portrayed from this scripture, that if you do these things, if you do all these things that Jesus says, then you get a ticket right into heaven. I find both of those interpretations a distortion of this scripture. The turning point for me in my struggle with this story from the Gospel of Matthew came many years ago when someone recommended a wonderful book to me, a book called Good Goats, Healing Our Image of God. The dedication page at the beginning of the book quotes part of this passage from the 25th chapter of Matthew. And then it says, this book is dedicated to anyone who has ever felt like a goat and feared eternal punishment. The book offers in simple, clear language and beautifully illustrated colored pictures an image of God as love, an image of God as mercy, the love and mercy that Jesus reveals. One of the authors of Good Goats tells about a woman who came to see her, and she was distraught because of her son's destructive living including drug abuse and involvement with prostitution and pornography and assault. But what bothered the woman most was that her son wanted nothing to do with God. He wanted nothing to do with God or helping other people, helping anyone other than himself. And she wondered what would happen to her son without repenting. If her son died without repenting, what would happen to him? And if he still wanted nothing to do with God, and he had died, what would happen to him? Sheila, the author, had grown up with this image of God that had portrayed God as self-righteous, all male, and sitting on a judgment seat. Given that image, she thought to herself, God would probably send the woman's son to hell. But that was not the God who Sheila had come to know. She asked the mother how she would answer her own question. The mother paused and then said, well, I think that when you die, you appear before the judgment seat of God. And if you have lived a good life, then God will send you to heaven. If you have lived a bad life, then God will send you to hell. And then she concluded saying sadly, since my son has lived such a bad life, If he were to die without repenting, God would certainly send him to hell. Sheila had the woman close her eyes and imagine that she was sitting next to God, that she was sitting next to God's judgment throne. Imagine your son has died without repenting, she said, and now he has arrived at the judgment seat. How does your son feel? Well, after a long pause, the mother said, He feels lonely and empty. What would you like to do? Sheila said. The mother began to weep, and then she said, I want to throw my arms around my son. Then Sheila said, look into God's eyes and watch what God wants to do. God stepped from the throne and embraced this son, just as the mother had done, and then all three of them, God, the mother, and the son cried together. One of the foundations of this book, Good Goats, is that God loves us at least as much as the person who loves us the most. That God loves us 
at least as much as the person who loves us the most? We would probably all answer yes to having done what Jesus asks of us in this gospel story. Feed hungry people, give clothing to those who have little or none, welcome a stranger, visit the sick or someone imprisoned physically, emotionally, or spiritually. You see, we are all sheep. We are all sheep. And then if the question was, how many of us have ever walked past someone who was hungry? How many of us have ever failed to offer clothes to someone who needed them or did not welcome the stranger or did not visit someone that we knew was imprisoned in some way or did not visit the sick? Too bad. We're, good go we're goats. We're all goats as well. And that's why the book is called Good Goats. Most of us can imagine ourselves falling into both groups, of depending, depending on what particular time of life it is or what we're going through in life. So really, we are all good goats. We're all good goats. You see, this scripture is not about a place. It's not about a destination. It is about the here and now. It's about the potential within us. It's about the needs that are around us right now. It's about heaven and hell in our midst. And it's about God who loves us, at least as much as the person who loves us the most. So how does this gospel scripture apply to the life that we are living in this year, in the year of 2020? Once again, we have a scripture that is timeless. This scripture is timeless and it's relevant to life today. One of the simplest ways to live this scripture and to care for the least of these is something that we have heard over and over and over again in these raging pandemic days. It's to wear a face mask. It's to wear a face mask when we go out in public. It's to keep a six-foot social distance. It's to wash our hands. And it's to avoid gathering with people outside of our immediate family that live with us. It's about all of those things. Yes, we've heard it before, but so often we fail to realize that even, that even the smallest of efforts, that even the smallest of efforts can do great things to care for other people. And that is what this scripture is about. It's about the small, everyday efforts to care for others, to care for others the way that Jesus cared for others. And when we do that, we're really caring for Jesus. Our actions can also take us, there's other actions that can take us to being good goats as we live out this scripture in this year of 2020. And those things might be things that so many of us are already doing, so many of you are already doing and you're keeping doing those things. It's things like making calls or sending cards or emails or texts or doing other things to check in with other people. It's about donating food to the food pantries or working the collection drives or serving the meals. It's about educating ourselves about racism and what racism is and where the injustices are within our systems and in life around us. Another action that we can do in this year of 2020 is to keep paying attention. To keep paying attention. Pay attention to your instincts to sew more face masks, to deliver meals, to buy groceries and put them on the doorstep of someone that we know shouldn't or can't go out. Pay attention to your instincts to draw messages of hope on sidewalks or to put up signs in front of schools or public safety departments or in front of health care clinics or hospitals. Pay attention to what your neighbors need and how you might safely meet those needs. When we pay attention to others, we really are paying attention to Jesus. And when we pay attention to Jesus, then the reign of Christ, the compassion of God, starts to get lived out in our daily lives in small and big ways. May it be so for each of us. Thanks be to God. Amen.
And now as we continue in worship, we come to our time of offering. And through our offerings, we renew our dedication to God's work in this world through the ministries of this church. And in this year of gratitude for us and in this season of thanksgiving, when we make our offerings, it really is a response. It's a response to all that is ours, all that God has already given us. There are several ways that you can make your offering. You can click the donate button on our church website right near where you clicked into worship, and that will give you several online giving options. Or you can mail your offering to the church, or you can drop it in our church mailbox if you're coming past the church. And each week we try to show you pictures and tell a story about the, what's happening in our ministry and what you're making possible through your offerings. And this week we have pictures of our latest food collection and our collection of personal hygiene items in order to support the Sun Prairie Food Pantry. And this happened last Saturday and we give thanks for those that were able to work the collection drive and also those that delivered all the groceries and the, the hygiene items during the week to the food pantry. So again, thank you for the ways that you're supporting the ministries of our church. And now we lift up our time of offering our prayers. In each week, we remind you that you can make a prayer request by emailing or calling the church office, or you can put it online in our uh, church in the, at the church website by clicking on the prayer request button. And we continue to pray for families and individuals within our faith community, and we have people who are writing prayer cards to them. And then each week we lift up a different community organization and we offer our thanks for that organization. And this week we are lifting up and offering thanks for the Prairie Heritage Quilters. The Prairie Heritage Quilters. They create quilts and use them to uh, lift up and offer fundraising for different community organizations. And they also offer an annual quilt show. So we, we thank them for their work and their ministry in our community. We have several other prayers that have come to us this week that I want to make you aware of. We had been praying for Ed Addison, who was nearing the end of his life, and Ed did pass away this last week. And we offer our prayers for his family. Uh, they will be waiting till a later date to celebrate Ed's life with a service. Gordy Wellman, who had heart bypass surgery last Friday, he has gotten home from the hospital, but uh, still needs quite a bit of care. So our, our prayers are with Gordy and with Joyce and their family as they care for care for him. Jason Potoff, who's one of our confirmation mentors, uh, has been in the hospital and had some surgery uh, later this last week, and he has a blood clot in his arm. So we pray that that surgery went well and that he can be in, in a position to have good healing. Jeanette Fumel has asked for our prayers. Uh, her sister Beth uh, died last Friday after a short illness, so we uh, pray for Jeanette and her family. John and Jean Thompson asked for our prayers for close family friends whose daughter has a rare cancer, and she had surgery this past week. So we pray for that family. Christy Stover has asked for our prayers for her dad. He had back surgery this last week, and he also is the primary caregiver for her mother. So our, our prayers for good strength for his recovery and for, for that care. Bonnie Cott has asked for our prayers for a cousin's son named Nick, who had a bone marrow transplant this last week to help his leukemia. And then we had several gratitudes in our gratitude jar this week. And one gratitude comes from Ed Swanson, who uh, we lifted up last week of having some unexpected surgery and, and now going through some uh, health decisions. And he says, to the many angels of SPUMC that have called, sent cards, and offered prayers during this very difficult time. What a testament to Christian love. So we thank Ed for sharing that gratitude. And we have several gratitudes from our middle school Sunday school class that is meeting online. And they offer gratitude for family, for internet net that helps them do things online, for holidays, for food, and for other youth to stay connected with. So now we bring ourselves into God's presence and we turn to God with our own prayers and to take time in silence to be able to lift our own prayers to God. So let us turn to God in silent prayer. Let us pray. Faithful God, thank you for the gift of today, for the ability to wake up, to move, and to breathe. 
Help us to recognize everything we have is truly a gift from you. Help us to give thanks for that gift, to make the most of that gift, and to live fully as your people and the people that you have called us to be, people that reflect your love and your light and your generosity to the world around us. God, we pray for our world as we continue to navigate through the raging COVID-19 pandemic. We pray for those who are ill and those caring for the sick. We pray for our students and educators and families as they navigate how best to do school and learn in these days. We pray for those making the hard decisions. Offer your wisdom and your discernment and your compassion. Loving God, for all who live in special need this day, we raise our prayers. Sustain those in pain. Offer hope to those in treatment. Calm those who are frustrated or anxious. Stay alongside those who grieve. And use us to be your instruments of care and compassion. In this year of gratitude with our faith community, and as we move into a week of offering thanksgiving, equip us for gratitude and thankfulness that shines through us to others so that all may see that within our lives. It is with the vision of a grateful world that we pray as Jesus taught, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. As a response to our worship, we invite you to put your faith into action, and we have several ways for you and your family to do that. We encourage you to go to our church website at sunprairieumc.org and see what is happening in the life of our church and where you might get connected. Beginning on Tuesday of this coming week, we will have a short Thanksgiving devotion and music online to prepare our hearts and minds in gratitude for Thanksgiving. You will be able to access that devotion through our website and our Facebook page, and it will be a wonderful opportunity for you and your family to prepare for Thanksgiving. On our website, under our Worship tab at the top of the screen, you can access our Advent page. The season of Advent begins on Sunday, November 29th, and we have many ways for you to prepare to celebrate the birth of the Christ child during Advent. One of those ways is our spirit of giving. This year, we are sponsoring 80 children in our Spirit of Giving gifts, and we still have a few children that need sponsoring. You can find that information on our Advent page under Spirit of Giving gifts. I encourage you to check that out. And if you are sponsoring a child, our drop-off dates for those gifts are Saturday, December 5th from 10 to noon, and Monday, December 7th from 10 to 1 p.m. If you don't already receive our Thursday email that outlines what's happening in the life of our church, you can contact the church office. We have many ministry opportunities for children, youth, adults, and families. If you would like to receive our devotional word of the week that comes out on Mondays, please contact the church office. Hello, my name is Sarah Bolin, and I've been a member here for about eight years. I also serve as chair of the finance committee with the leadership board. I came to Sun Prairie United Methodist Church several years after my local hometown church closed due to lack of membership. I wasn't sure what I wanted or needed from a church, but I really missed the connections my friends and I had during our time from singing songs and performing Christmas skits in front of all of our parents, family, and the elder generation of church ladies who acted as all of our grandmas. In coming to Sun Prairie, I was able to get that connection back. And I got so much more with everything that Sun Prairie offers its youth. I came here a bit before my daughter was born, and since then we've participated in many of the things that this church has to offer. Logos and VBS have made a huge impact on us. My daughter has the type of relationships with the elder church generation that I had when I was a kid, and I hope that I'm also learning to be that type of person that the church ladies were to me. And even when Sun Prairie had to pause most of these activities due to COVID, Miss Amanda and Miss Jamie were working so hard to maintain connections for all of the youth. 
Over the summer, we had driveway lunch visits, virtual BBS school, rollerblading, and bike riding gatherings. The flamingo flocking has returned. The 5K to benefit Sunshine Place, and still so much more that I can't even list here. Pastor Jenny and the other confirmation mentors are making virtual connections still meaningful. The staff has created several Facebook groups to support all of us, whether it's just for children and families, mental health, or just dealing with all of this stuff with COVID. Because everyone here works so hard, that is why I give. I give to support all the things the church does for its members and the community that we serve. The church is here for us, and during this time of the stewardship campaign, I ask that you are also here for the church community. Now may we continue in this day in gratitude and hope, looking for opportunities to serve. See today with God's vision of goodness. Embrace today with Christ's compassion, Walk today in the Spirit's boldness and live today as God's grateful people. Thanks be to God. Amen.